Hello, I'm Hannah and I'm filming from my studio here in Leith in Edinburgh. I have an interest in alternative photography, particularly camera free techniques, and I've recently completed a project creating a hundred cyanotypes, one a day for a hundred consecutive days. In an aim to make my practice more sustainable, I've now started to experiment with anthotypes. So anthotypes use plants um, which are sensitive to light in order to make an image. So if you're up for it, I'm going to take you exploring my neighbourhood. I'm going to take you off to my allotment. I'll show you how to make anthotypes and we can explore this technique together. Here we are in Leith, the most densely populated part of Scotland, and I wanted to show you that no matter whether you live in a city or not, there's always pockets of nature that you can find. Let's go find some green spaces. This is the water of Leith. I'm super lucky to live right by the river. There's plenty of nature to be found on the banks of the river. Let's have a quick stop at the post box. I've still got that postcard to send to you guys. Most of us Leithers live in flats with no access to a garden or maybe a shared back green. This is one historic house I thought I'd like to show you. This lamb's house. Been here for hundreds of years. In recent times the owners of Lamb's House have planted a beautiful medieval inspired garden. I think it's time we hopped on my bike and headed off down to the allotment. Morning. Hello! Lovely morning. Isn't it gorgeous? <laughs> That's us arrived at the allotment. Before we go on in, we're going to do a little bit of harvesting. So to make our anthotypes, we need to choose some berries or petals or leaves to work with. And we're going to be crushing those up to make an emulsion, which we'll paint onto paper. Uh, when you're choosing what to use for it, Please do your research and make sure you're not picking anything poisonous. For example, yesterday I was looking at some poppy petals, but a quick Google told me that that was a really bad idea. So instead I'm going to use things that I know are edible. So I'm going to start off by harvesting some brambles. Well, welcome to my allotment. on my plot and I'm ready to make an emulsion with the brambles that I picked. If you're using leaves or petals you might find a pair of scissors is handy to um, chop things up into smaller bits before you start. Um, because I'm out here on the allotment with no power I'm going the rustic method with my uh, pestle and mortar um, but you can always use um, a food processor um, maybe one of those handheld whisks um, if you want to make life a bit easier for yourself 
Um, I'm hoping to try some beetroot at some stage and I thought that maybe grating that with a cheese grater could be a good way to break up the, the vegetable. So let's pop some of these brambles. Well, I think you call them blackberries down south here. Let's pop them in. And let's get mushing. And my brambles have got a good water content with them. What we're wanting to do is make a, an emulsion, a kind of paint with them. So for some things that you're trying, you will want to dilute them. You can dilute using water. It's also a good idea to use some alcohol in your mix. It's not essential, um, but it does help to make the colours come out stronger in your antitypes. I've got um, a bottle of 70% uh, alcohol here that I bought this a while ago to try and um, kill some bugs that I had on my houseplants. Um, I think this is used for cleaning, um, but you can also you can get um, cheap vodka apparently works brilliantly. So yeah, a little bit of alcohol would be good. I'm outdoors and uh, I'm not too worried about making a mess, but uh, if you're at home, you might want to put newspaper down or wear an apron because yeah, these strong colours here could be pretty messy. Okay, I think that crushed up nice and easily. I think it's time to add a little bit of the alcohol into it. So I'm fairly new to anthotypes, so just like yourselves, it's going to be a little bit of experimentation, trial and error. So it's gone a little bit runnier, but it's still not sort of as runny as a, a paint might be. I might have a little bit more alcohol. Look at the consistency there. It's a great colour, hey? <laughs> so I have some paper here. I'm working with some watercolour paper, um, but you could try different things. I'm looking forward to trying some fabrics. Um, or I've, I've, oft I've often used um, wallpaper lining paper because it's really cheap, it's really thick, and that's used to getting wet. So try different things, see what works for you. Now, if I painted it onto the paper right now, it'll be a little bit lumpy. So I'm going to have a try with my cloth here to see if I can use this like a sieve and squeeze it through. So this is where it could get really quite messy. <laughs> I'll just give you a little close up so you can see what's happening there. Yeah, it's squeezing out really quite nicely. If you're not so keen on having stained hands, you might want to wear some gloves for this. So you can see my lovely emulsion there. It's time now to paint that onto my paper. So for this you can use a regular paintbrush or I'm going to use a sponge brush that I have because um, that will make a smoother coating and I shouldn't get so much in the way of brush marks, but brush marks can also have their own qualities. There we go. For some of your anthotypes, you might want to put on several coats and you'd need to leave it to dry between coats. This is already a really strong colour, so I think I'm just going to I'm going to put one more coat on. Now to do that, I need this to dry, but the anthotype process relies on ultraviolet light and we don't want this to be exposed to light right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop it in my shed and close the door. It's quite dark in there and uh, we'll leave it to dry. In there. That's coat number one, pretty much dry. It's a good strong colour, but just to be sure, I'm going to put on one more coat. My top tip is to try and coat it nice and evenly. If you have any areas where the emulsion gathers and it starts to pool, it doesn't work so well. So yeah, try and have it nice and even. So that's my emulsion, lovely and dry. Our next step is to make a photogram. 
So a photogram is a way of taking a photograph by laying an object onto the surface. So I have some ferns growing just over there, just out of shot. This is classic, this has been used for cyanotypes uh, since time began and the fern leaf works really well because when you place it onto the paper there it's got these great shapes going in and out and so that allows some of the sunlight to reach some parts of the paper and then obviously it's blocking the sunlight from going to other parts of the paper and that's what this technique is all about. So in order to for it to lay flat against the paper and to create the best shadow, that's what this is about, it's all about the shadows, uh, I have got myself a photo frame here. So I'm going to put it into my frame. I want it to be so we can actually see it there. Let's pop the back on. lovely that's all sandwiched together so the next thing is to expose it to sunlight uh, sadly I don't have a greenhouse or a polytunnel at my allotment if you're uh, lucky enough to have one of those then that would be a perfect place for it um, you could put it in a window at home or I'm actually in a little bit of a rush because I'd like to get this vi video finished so that you guys can uh, see it and start experimenting yourselves. So I've actually got some UV lights at home, so I'm going to make use of those. Now making anthotypes isn't an exact science. Uh, different emulsions take different lengths of time to develop. Um, it is a process where you need to have a little bit of patience. Um, the shortest time I'd say is about three days and the longest time some people leave it for weeks and weeks. Um, the best way to gauge is just, just to keep an eye on it. So what should happen is where my plant is, the sunlight shouldn't be reaching that area. So that should be remaining the lovely purple color and then all of this purple colour, this should change colour. So that's what we're looking, we're looking to see a colour change here so that we know we'll have a contrast between what's behind our leaf there. Thanks for joining me at my allotment. Here's some examples of some successful anthotypes. I've also got some suggestions here for plants which would make great anthotypes. Have fun with your experimenting and if you'd like to share your results on your social media it would be great if you could tag the Boundary Way project and also myself and if you could use the hashtag postcards from the plot. Cheerio!